Hi there smart monks and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back! This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters and I post videos weekly so please subscribe and turn on the notification button to know when I post any new videos. So in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to factorize trinomials. This is something that a lot of students struggle with so hopefully by the end of this video you will have a strong understanding and know exactly how to do this. Okay, in my description box below you can find links to worksheets where you can practice this work and you can also find videos on my on my personal platform. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into this video. Okay, so this is your lesson on algebra where I'll be teaching you how to factorize trinomials. Okay, so I like to always make sure you understand what the difference is between simplification and factorization so that you know when you need to do what. So if we think of simplifying, you will think of, if you just think of a simple example like 6 times 3 gives you 18, the 18 is the simplified form, right? Then if we have 18 and we put it in its factors, then eight, 6 times 3 is the factorized form. Now the same works for algebra. If I have x plus 1 times x plus 2, we use our um, arrow method to simplify and that will give us x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2 and that will then give us x squared plus 3x plus 2. This now is again your simplified form. But what you're beginning to do now and what I'm going to teach you in this lesson is how to take the simplified form and now factorize it back into these two factors so that you understand that this now is what we're asking to what they're asking us to do so when you are being asked to simplify a question in test that means they want you to find the answer and get rid of all the brackets the root square roots etc but if they ask you to factorize they want you to take the expression and put it in its factors okay so in this lesson i'm going to show you how to do it if you are given a trinomial so let's start with these three examples okay so I'm going to show you step by step so that when you are actually doing it, I want you to follow those same steps. So I've got x squared plus 7x plus 6. So the first step is to write down the factors of 6. So in other words, write down the factors of the constant. So in our case, it's 6, but in any other question, it would obviously be a different number if it's not 6. Okay, so we write down the factors of 6. So our factors of 6 is 1 and 6 and 3 and 2. Right. Step number two says select the factors and signs that would equal the middle term. So in our question, the middle term is seven. And we look at if I could only add and subtract these pairs, which pair would actually be able to give me seven? And the answer for this is six and one, because three and two, even if we add three to two, it gives us five. If we take three minus two, it gives us a uh, one so there's no way that three and two can give us seven but six and one can give us seven so we will then use that but we need to get positive seven so that means we'll take positive six plus positive one would give us positive seven okay now what we do is, is we open our brackets right we complete the brackets and then we check the answer so we open our brackets and we write x as the first, if this is the variable here, we write x as the first uh, as the first uh, um, term in each bracket, and then whatever you calculated here to give you the middle term, plus six plus one is then your factors, is then your second term in each bracket. Okay, so I've got x plus six and x plus one is then the factorized form. Now we have to check. So how do we check our answers? We multiply the two terms, last terms together to see if we get the last term in our expression. So 6 multiplied by 1 is positive 6 multiplied by positive 1 does give me positive 6. So that means that the answer is correct. Okay, it's very important to check. And let me explain to you why it's important to check. So let's look at the second example. So here we've got x squared minus 5x minus 6. Again, we start off by writing down the factors of the constant. And again, in this case, it's 6. So we write down 6 and 1, 3 and 2. Those are my factors. Okay, next one now is we need to find out which of these factors can actually give us 5. Negative 5. But if I look at this, do you agree with me that if I say minus 6 plus 1, I will get minus 5. But I can also say minus 3 minus 2 and I will also get minus 5. 
So the question would be here, which pair do we use? So let's say we just pick a pair. So we choose 3 and 2. Okay, so that means I've got negative 3 and negative 2. So in my brackets, I go x minus 3. Okay, so you see both of these can give you negative 5. But now let's say we choose our first pair. We choose negative 3 and negative 2, right? Now, both of these give us the middle term. However, when we do our check, do you see negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6? And our question is a negative 6. So that means we've chosen the wrong pair. So we then go and we choose the second pair, which is minus 6 plus 1. So this is essentially why it's important for you to check. Okay? So we've got negative 6 times positive 1. And that will then essentially give us um, our factors of x minus 6 and x plus 1. And if we check it, negative 6 times positive 1, it does give us negative 6. Okay, so this is then the correct answer and not the top one. Now let's look at the last question. Again, first thing, write down the factors of 6. Now we need to find negative 5. Okay, so again, we know that it can't be this one because when we did this check, do you see it can't be this pair because negative 6 and positive 1 will give me negative 6. I'm looking for positive 6. So that means we then have to choose the other pair, which is x minus 3, x minus 2. Okay, so that is the process. This is the three steps that you need to approach to be able to factorize a trinomial. Okay, so let's do three more examples and then I'm going to give you some to try on your own. Okay, so if I have x squared minus 11x plus 10, I say what are the factors of 10? It's 5 and 2, 10 and 1. Which of these are actually going to give me my middle term of negative 11? I know that 10 and 1 is going to work because I can go negative 10 minus 1. There's no way that 5 and 2 can give me 11. Okay, then I open my brackets and I just say 10 min x minus 10 and then x minus 1. Then I check my answer. I check the last two terms. Negative 10 times negative 1 gives me positive 10. So that means that this is the correct answer. Okay. Next one, again, what are the factors of 12? 12 and 1, 6 and 2, 4 and 3. Don't worry about the sign when finding the factors. Just use the number to find the factors. Now I have to ask myself, which of these pairs can give me 4? Right? So I know that it's going to be 6 and 2. I need to get positive 4. So 6 needs to be positive and 2 needs to be negative. So that will give me x plus 6 and x minus 2. And now I check, positive 6 times negative 2 gives me negative 12. Last one, I write down the factors of 9, which is 9 and 1 and 3 and 3. Which pair is going to give me 10? It's going to be the 9 and the 1, and it needs to be negative 10. So I'm going to say minus 9, minus 1 to give me the minus 10. And then I've got x minus 9 and x minus 1. Remembering that these two numbers that you use here are the numbers that is actually going to be in our brackets over there. And that's essentially how you factorize trinomials. So let's see. Oh, we didn't check the last one. Oopsie. Negative 9 times negative 1 gives us positive 9. So we know that that's correct. Okay, please don't forget to check. Like I just forgot now. Okay, now I want you to write down these questions and I want you to try and I want you to pause this video and try and factorize these six questions and then unpause to see if you got it right and we can mark it. Okay, remember with maths, I always include an exercise because we only actually complete our understanding and complete our learning once we've actually done it ourselves. Okay, now let's see how well you did. Okay, so factorize the following. So what were the factors you're supposed to get for A? It's x minus 4, x minus 2. For B, this was x plus 4, x plus 2. Then for C, it would be x plus 10 and x plus 1. For D, your answers should have been x minus 10 and x minus 5. E, we have x minus 3 and x plus 6. And then your last one was x minus 8 and x plus 3. So hopefully you got this right. Hopefully you are confident on how to uh, factorize these trinomials and remember there shouldn't be any 
uh, pluses and minuses between numbers and variables outside a bracket once you have completed factorizing. That's how you can check that we, that you are actually done factorizing. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our video on how to factorize trinomials. Alright, so there's that video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please add it in the comment section below. You can also give me recommendations for future videos that you can also add in the comment section. Also, if you are interested in the worksheets and all the other videos that I've created, have a look at the links in the description. Uh, if it's not there just yet, please just bear with me. I am in the process of building this platform. So as soon as it is in the if, as soon as it is at the quality that I want it to be, I will share it with you guys. Alright, thank you so much guys and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!